good morning dear students after a long gap i am facing you students i i hope that all of you you are in best of your health and mind and you are hearing me yani ji you must be hearing me isn't it i will give a lecture on general anesthesia general anesthesia why it is important because nowadays the surgeons they cannot work without general anesthetics or even local anesthetics so i will lecture on general anesthetic only general anesthesia means drugs which induce reversible loss of consciousness and all sensations in normal usual doses and the features of general anesthetics are they should produce loss of sensation especially pain sensation they should produce sleep or unconsciousness they should produce amnesia the patient should be made immobile by the action of the general anesthetics and they should have muscle relaxation and abolition of all somatic and autonomic reflexes should be there before the discovery of the general anesthetics the process through which the patients underwent during any surgical procedure that was very horrible before the middle of the 19th century surgery means as if the patient will go horrific conditions after the surgery is over in most of the cases it was said that the surgery is successful but the patient is no more he is dead so more than 80% of the patients that died and physicians they used different types of things like alcohol like opium like cannabis or any other psychotic drugs or even patients were induced concussions or even asphyxia to make them amenable to surgery that is to obtain the surgical pain the history of anesthetics it starts actually with observation of humphrey davy humphrey davy around about 1799 you must be remembering humphrey davy he discovered the various cations like calcium magnesium potassium sodium as also chlorine iodine all these elements it was discovered by this pioneer gentleman humphrey davy he realized the intoxicating effect of nitrous oxide n2o and he first opined that this can be utilized by the surgeons to make an operation successful after 44 years horace wells a dentist he picked up nitrous oxide as an anesthetic which was previously used for calming down schizophrenic patients Horace Wells in the next year he tried to extract the teeth of one of his colleagues Morton and it was unsuccessful so Morton he tried to develop other things and after experimenting on animals with ether he first introduced ether 
an as an aesthetic in 1846 later on simpson in 1847 chloroform it is trichloromethane used chloroform it was a common obstetric and anesthetics you will be astonished to know that simpson he experimented chloroform on himself and his friends and that was a very popular obstetric and anesthetic but later on it came to be known that it is highly hepatotoxic later on another hydrocarbon cyclopropene it's a big molecule substance it is c 3H6, you can say, it is a cyclic propane. So that was introduced in 1929. But this compound was a very good anesthetic, but it was highly inflammable. So it was discarded. The modern era of anesthesia it started with the introduction of halothane. Halothane is bromofluoro iodoethane. He introduced halothane in 1956. The first halogenated hydrocarbon moiety that was introduced and began the area of, era of anesthetics. Later on, pentothal or thiopentone sodium was the first intravenous anesthetic which was used in 1935. How the anesthetics they act, it's not precisely known, but there must be some common physicochemical properties of the general anesthetics which are responsible for the anesthetic effect. And parallelism exists between the lipid water partition coefficient of the general anesthetics and the anesthetic effect, it was known. The potency of the anesthetics is expressed as MAC, M-A-C, that is minimal anesthetic concentration. What that means? It means that this denotes the lowest concentration of the anesthetic in pulmonary alveoli, which is needed to produce immobility in 50% of the individuals to block response to any surgical incision. So 50% of the individuals when they are under immobilization and they cannot feel the surgical pain, then only we can say that the minimum alveolar concentration of the anesthetic is there, MAC. MAC progressively declines for inhalation agents as age goes beyond 50 years. What is the mechanism of action of this general anesthetics? I have already told that there is correlation between oil gas participation coefficient of general anesthetics and their MAC, it reflects the capacity of these general anesthetics to enter the CNS and reach and enter the brain cells. Previously, an old unitary theory was there that probably it was some common molecular mechanism like membrane expansion, perturbation, and fluidization of the cells in response to general anesthetics effect. But the new theory, it says that the effect is very much specific to the particular agent. Direct interaction of general anesthetic molecules with hydrophobic domains of membrane proteins in lipid protein interface has been provoked. The principal locus of the general anesthetics are in the thalamus and reticular activating system 
in the cerebrospinal tract. Amnesia, it is due to the effect on cerebral cortex and hippocampus, whereas spinal cord is a seat of action for immobilization on surgical stimulation, that is incision. Main target of the general anesthetics are the ligand gated ion channels and not the voltage gated ion channels, what we have known from your classes of receptors. The most important receptor is GABA A receptors, GABA A receptor gated chloride channels is the main target of the most anesthetics. Specific sites are there on the GABA A receptor for individual agents. Some inhale general anesthetics as also barbiturates, they also can directly act on chloride channels. Glycine, you know this is another central inhibitory neurotransmitter mainly present in the spinal cord, also activates chloride channels in spinal cord and medulla. You must remember the range social mechanism. Effect of glycine is augmented by barbiturates, propofol and inhalational agents that may be responsible for immobility induced by the general anesthetics. Halogenated general anesthetics and barbiturates, they also inhibit neuronal cation channels gated by nicotinic cholinergic receptors. They may be responsible for analgesia and amnesia. Nitrous oxide and ketamine, they also inhibit the excitatory NMDA type of glutamate receptors. Glutamate is an excitatory neurotransmitter in the CNS. Glutamate receptors are calcium selective channels. Local anesthetics, remember, local anesthetics, they act by blocking axonal conduction, that means directly on the neurons. But general anesthetics, they act by inhibiting synaptic transmission, not on the neurons, but on the synapses. Their locus of action is there. Now, we come to the stages of anesthesia. The person who classified the stages, he was Guedel in 1920, and he made his observations and stagings by seeing the effect of ether. Later on, the pre-anesthetic medication, introduction of muscle relaxants, and using combination of anesthetic agent difference, the stages are not so disc discriminatory. Particularly the GAs, when they act on the cortex, the higher functions are lost first and the lower centers are affected later. In spinal cord, reversely, lower centers are inhibited first and then higher centers. And vital centers in the medulla, they are affected last. The first stage of anesthesia is stage of analgesia. How can you signify it? From the starting of the inhalational agent, to loss of consciousness, just beginning of loss of consciousness, this is stage of analgesia. Pain sensation is progressively abolished. Amnesia starts at the end of this stage. Reflexes and respiration remain absolutely normal. Very short procedures, very quick procedures, they can be done under this stage. Then comes stage of delirium, which is very much prominent with ether anesthesia if it is solitarily used. It starts from the loss of consciousness to the beginning of the regular respiration. There is in this stage apparent excitement. Apparent excitement like struggle, holding of breath, the patient may shout, 
there is increased muscle tone there may be tightly closed jaws and jerky breathing there may be vomiting involuntary micturition or defecation and heart rate and blood pressure increases probably due to sympathetic stimulation no operation should be done in this stage and this is not very conspicuous in modern anesthesia then comes the stage of surgical anesthesia and during this stage most of the operations they are done in different planes from onset of regular respiration to cessation of spontaneous breathing is the stage of anesthesia it is divided into four planes plane one where we see roving eyeballs it ends with fixation of the eyeball plane two loss of corneal and laryngeal reflexes at this plane the laryngoscopic introduction can be done plane three pupils start dilating and light reflex lost probably this is the final stage plane 4 there is inter intercostal paralysis shallow abdominal respiration and dilation of the pupil after this as anesthesia passes to deeper plane muscle tone decreases blood pressure falls heart rate increases and there is weak pulsations respiration depth is decreased and lower frequency is there and lastly there is stage of medullary paralysis where there is cessation of breathing failure of circulation and death pupils are widely dilated there are certain other important observations during all these stages that is if eyelash reflex is present and patient is showing swallowing movement stage 2 is not reached loss of reflex to painful stimuli that means how can you judge it pressing on the upper nasal border of orbit there will be muscle quenching so we know that the stage 3 is reached if anesthesia is kept light adequate analgesic amnesia and muscle relaxation should be done by iv root additionally and pre medication with opioids that lowers mac minimum alveolar concentration of general anesthetics very often when two general anesthetics are combined suppose nitrous oxide and isoflurane their max are additional that means lower concentration of each is required 0.5 mac of n2o that is 53% round about and 0.5 mac of isoflurane that is 0.6% produce same effect as 1 mac of isoflurane dose response curves of inhaled general anesthetics are very steep 30% higher concentration of any general anesthetic that is 1.3 mac immobilizes 95% of the individuals that means deep plane of anesthesia is obtained so concentration above 1.5 mac is rarely used and more than 2 mac is often or rather we can say always fatal and you must be very careful of that that's why general anesthetics they are one of the most toxic agents in the real sense just increasing the dose double the patient is gone so they are so much toxic nitrous oxide particularly the mac is percentage is very high 
the one mac of nitrous oxide is 105 percent. So it is never given in full one mac. It is given 70 percent maximum. So thanks for the whole lecture. I think my lecture has not anesthetized the students, hopefully. So again, see you on the next class.